Well, hello. As promised, I'm going to do a, a video on something I found out about resveratrol and also some things to explain why it works so well. Anyway, here's the, uh, the study that uh, just recently touted resveratrol for viral infection. In it, it says resveratrol inhibits the influence of virus replication. It was thought that this was due to resveratrol's influence on cellular redox status via glutathione. However, this inhibition was demonstrated not to be directly associated with glutathione-mediated antioxidant activity, but inhibiting nuclear cytoplasmic translocation of viral ribonuclear proteins and reducing the expression of late viral proteins associated with the inhibition of protein kinase C. Protein kinase C is a series of enzymes that has a lot to do with gene expression and cell proliferation. It also goes on to say, it appears that resveratrol has inhibitory activity against various viral enzymes. For example, it acts as an inhibitor to ribonucleotide reductase. Inhibiting the enzyme ribonucleotide reductase inhibits viral replication. Resveratrol's antiviral activity against herpes simplex virus appears to be via the same mechanism, namely inhibition of nucleotide reductase impairing the expression of viral proteins. Resveratrol also demonstrated a potential inhibitory effect on pseudorabies virus, a major devastating disease in the swine industry due to the inhibition of NF-kappa beta, nuclear factor kappa beta. In a global real-life randomized study of 82 children, an aerosol solution of resveratrol plus carboxymethyl beta-glucan significantly reduced nasal symptoms, cough, and fever, as well as reducing the need for medication and, and medical visits. This combination was furthermore tested in vitro for its effect on human rhinovirus replication, HRV, and was found effective to inhibit the production of several HRV-induced inflammatory mediators, this chitosine storm, in the nasal epithelial, possibly due to resveratrol's ability to suppress viral replication. Overall, the antiviral mechanism of resveratrol in human and animal viral infections appears to include inhibition of viral replication, protein synthesis, inhibition of transcription and signaling pathways, as well as viral-related gene expressions. Yeah, and the study goes on to support resveratrol for its safety and efficacy. Due to its safety record, established role as an antioxidant supplement, and the evidence of antiviral activity, we propose that resveratrol could be used for patients that have recently been exposed to the virus for prophylactic use, or those that have just been diagnosed and are still asymptomatic. So one has to ask, why does resveratrol work? One of the things we do know is that resveratrol uh, doesn't make NAD+, but it activates the mechanisms to make NAD+, so it makes the sirtuins work. And I think that the reason resveratrol works is because its actual action is to stimulate the production of NAD, and then something else is actually happening inside the cell. And I think that was pretty evident in this doctoral thesis by a Princeton PhD, Dr. Hannah Budieva. Defining the functions of human sirtuin-2 and cellular housekeeping and during viral infection. A dissertation presented to the faculty of Princeton University in candidacy for a degree of Doctor of Philosophy. And you see, this is where this, this is really going here. It's the sirtuins that regulate everything in the cells, and sirtuins can't work without NAD+. And in her doctoral thesis, she states, Sir 1 and 2, sirtuin 1 and sirtuin 2, are members of the sirtuin family of a million NAD plus dependent acetylases. Sirtuins have nuclear, sirt 1, 6, and 7, mitochondrial, sirt 3, 4, and 5, and cytoplasmic SIRT2 locations, which positions them to regulate numerous intracellular processes. Moreover, the pathways in which they function are frequently modulated during viral infection to establish efficient viral replication. Uh, and what that means is if they're not completely active, they don't prevent viral replication. Interestingly, SIRT1 and 2 have several common substrates. They can both deacetylate transcription factors, including P53 and F-kappa B, that are both known to activate responses to viral infections. What does the NF-kappa B pathway do? Nuclear factor kappa B is an ancient protein transcription factor. It's a regulator of innate immunity. The NF-kappa B signaling pathway links pathogenic signals and cellular danger signals, thus organizing cellular resistance to invading pathogens. So what Hannah found out in her studies in her doctoral thesis was this. We find that sirtuin activation decreases early and late viral protein levels, while sirtuin inhibition increases these levels and provides evidence for the conversion of sirtuin functions in antiviral defense. So really what she's saying is that in the early phases of a viral infection, that sirtuin levels become inactive. They aren't able to overcome the 
replication of these viral strands. So she found out this. Sirtuins as targets for antiviral therapeutics. In summary, sirtuins offer a remarkably rich diversity of regulatory points. Their NAD plus dependent activities, check that out, NAD plus independent activities, allow them to transmit information about changes in the environment to major cellular pathways for rapid and effective responses. With our discovery that all sirtuins can impact the replication of DNA and RNA viruses, we expect to learn more about their universal roles in immune response, site response, and other types of defense responses utilized by an organism to prevent disease caused by pathogens, in particular virus. Therefore, being able to target sirtuins provides a valuable antiviral therapeutic strategy. Simply the simplest way, maybe the simplest way to control this family of enzymes is through regulation of NAD plus levels. And that's where it gets interesting. And that's why I put resveratrol in both the polyphenol plus and just resveratrol 1000 to make sure that you get resveratrol because resveratrol activates NAD+. Now, let's go back to the first study where they found out that an aerosol application on the epithelial cells of the respiratory tract knock out these viral infections. Well, that means resveratrol is probably activating NAD+, which is activating the sirtuins to interrupt the replication of these viruses. In Hannah's study, she found out that when sirtuins are active or inactive, they have a inhibitory or a encouraging effect on viral infections. If NAD plus is not in abundance, the sirtuins aren't active, so they can't stop a viral infection. But SIRT2, which is in the cytoplasm, which is where these protein strands are, where their subgenomic codes are acetylated on the lysine markers, which start and stop all the code sequences to make the shell, the spike proteins, the internal RNA, and all that stuff. It, if you can deacetylate these protein codes and their code sequence start and stop points, then they can't replicate. It stops the viral replication in its tracks, and they get put into the lysosomes for degradation gate, and they get dissolved or back into amino acids. Now, that means that the simplest way to prevent viral infections is to take resveratrol to activate your NAD+, because it activates the sirtuins, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, in the mitochondria, in the nucleus, and in the cytoplasm where these things get in. One thing that happens when you start deacetylating the inside of the cell, you take the roadblocks off the mitochondria. If you've got a viral infection, your mitochondria aren't working, and they're not getting around to get ATP to the sites to activate and run the cell properly. But when you take the acetyl markers off the microtubules, the mitochondria race all over the place and fix stuff, providing the ATP to operate all the cellular mechanisms. Meanwhile, SIRT2, which is activated by NAD+, is deacetylating the microtubules and lowering the calcium levels in the cell, and that encourages the mitochondria to reattach the microtubule sessions because as the calcium uh, channels are used to raise intercellular calcium, the proteins, the walker proteins on the bottom of the mitochondria that attach the microtubules detach so they can't actually run around. And the ones that can, can't get past the roadblocks, the acetyl groups on top of the microtubules. So, I don't know if you caught this, but in that earlier study they also found out that herpes virus is stopped with NAD. Herpes virus is stopped with resveratrol. Why? Well, there it is again. Resveratrol activates NAD+, NAD+, activates sirtuins, sirtuins activate the ability to deacetylate the markers to start and stop these viruses, and they end up inactive. They can't replicate. They get taken into lysosomes, they get digested, and put back in the cell as amino acids, which are used to make new cells. Hence the Phoenix Protocol, born from the ashes of the old. That's the exciting thing about resveratrol I want to tell you guys about. I take it daily. I take it with yogurt or some kind of fat like olive oil because water will neutralize it in 15 minutes. Whereas if you take it in with the fat, it gets in there, get in your cells, and everything works great. So polyphenol plus to help all your mitochondria because polyphenol plus is a combination of nutraceuticals plus transveratrol to specifically help neuronal cells and cells throughout the body and their mitochondria. And uh, the resveratrol plus is 500 milligrams of transresveratrol, the real deal and it activates the mechanisms to make your NAD. You want to stay healthy? Take some resveratrol. And on an absolutely related note, during dry fasting, about day five, you get rid of virus. That's because dry fasting upregulates NAD+. Go figure.